TextChat is a core system within multiplayer games. It's great for sending messages between players or even from the server. We'll be utilizing the basics of Unity's netcode for game objects to set up an easy chat system that works right off the bat. The project files will always be uploaded onto GitHub, so be sure to look or download them there if you're interested. And let's jump straight into it. First up, I'm using the latest version of Unity's long-term support release, 2022.3. Netcode for game object is a relatively new package, which may not be included in some older versions. The only package we'll need is netcode for game objects, which is within our package manager, which I can just search or scroll down to find and make sure your packages are set to Unity registry as always. And once you've found it, just click install and you'll be ready to go. The first thing every multiplayer project needs is a network manager. For now, we don't need to change any settings within it except the network transport. For this, I'm going to use the default Unity transport, which you can just add the component and drag and drop it into our network transport reference. Within the transport, you can adjust things like port and address, which you may adjust to allow players elsewhere to join. But for now, it's just a local LAN address. I'll quickly go through the interface setup before we start scripting. I've just got two buttons which hold a temporary host lobby and join as client calls within them. I've just assigned these within a script named multiplayer UI, which just holds reference to our network manager to host a server or start as a client. Now for the chat, I've just got a simple TextMess Pro input field, but there should be nothing you need to change in it other than things like font size. Onto the actual chat box, which I've named chat view, this is just a scroll rectangle which contains a scroll bar and an automatic content fitter, which will just adjust its size as it gets more and more chat messages. A very simple and basic system which can always be added upon. Opening our viewport up, it just holds a grid layout grip which will organize the chat messages, a layout element which I've ticked min width and min height, which will just make sure the height and width is never lower than those values. The component which does all this work though is in the content size fitter, which sets the vertical fit as preferred size. All this does is just adjust the size to our chat content to all messages so we're able to scroll through. Before we move on to our chat manager, I've created a script named chat message. This is just a prefab which basically just holds a reference to a text mesh pro, which will call to change its text to the message. The reason I've done this instead of a reference to a text object is to allow for possibility for different things like profile images, emblems, or whatever it may be in the future if you'd like to add it. I've just very simply made a prefab with a TextMesh Pro UI text within it and set the reference. Now onto the chat manager script. This will hold all my chat functions and calls. The only thing we'll need is two references, one named unity.netcode and another for TextMesh Pro. Although instead of making this object a mono behavior, we'll derive it from a network behavior. This just allows us to make server and client calls or RPCs from this script. I've set up a simple singleton pattern which can be used to be called from any other script, which might be handy if you're sending any other server information through the chat. I've just made three other references, one to the chat message prefab, our chat content, and our chat input field. I've added a temporary string named player name. This can be adjusted to whatever you like, just for testing purposes. Onto the update method. It's checking if the enter or return key is pressed on your keyboard. If the button is pressed, we can attempt to send a chat message through a method named send chat message, taking in our chat input text, which is basically what we've written and our player name. Once this is done, we'll deactivate the input field and empty the input field. Onto the send chat message method now, it will take two strings, one named message and another taking in who's the message from. I've set this as null to enable server wide messages without taking in a player's name, so you can leave it out if you need to. For example, if you're using death messages or whatever it may be. First up, we'll just check if our message being sent is not empty. If so, return and don't run any more of this method. Now I've just set up a simple format to our chat message, putting the player's name first, then an arrow followed by the message. Once this is done, we'll call our send chat message server RPC. This basically sends a RPC or a message to our server or host, which then will run the function on every player's chat manager. I've placed my RPCs at the bottom of the script. So going down now, you'll see the server RPC, which takes in the require ownership flag to be false. This just means it can be sent from anyone on the server, not just the host. All the method will do is call the method receive chat message client RPC within every player's chat manager. That method is a client RPC, which again, just calls the add message method. This last method instantiates a chat message prefab within our chat content and sets it to the text of our message. 
Just a reminder, when you are doing client and server RPCs, make sure you end it with a client RPC or server RPC, just like I've done. Otherwise, you'll get an error. And that's it. We just need to assign our variables and test them out. It should automatically add a network object because it derives from network behavior. If not, just add it in. Pass in our chat message prefab we made earlier, the chat content and chat input field. I've also set the player's name to player just for testing purposes. I've just made a build of a game to test it out, but there's great add-ons such as Parallel Sync, which allows you to test multiple players in the editor, and we'll test it out. I'll send a few messages and change our name within the editor to see if it changes. And that's it. I'm sending my messages nicely and it's all working. The system is by far not the most efficient, but it's definitely a strong foundation to a great text chat system. That's all for the tutorial. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please subscribe and like the video. You can find me on my Discord server and any other social media to support my content. Thank you again.